Tässä on hopeus. Tämä on matto. It's kind of like a disease, you know. You once you get started in it, and you see something fascinating, you just keep digging and digging and hoping. And some foolish Greek word and its relationship to a Hebrew equivalent and so on, and tracking it down in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and then discovering, to my amazement, that it has to be some kind of a Hebrew a Hebrew word that Jesus used here. And then suddenly, you know, suddenly you see a flower sort of burst in front of you, and you say. Ah, this is what he meant, you know. But on the other hand, it's a great annoyance. <laughs> it's uh, it's a hard kind of work, and to tell you the truth, I'd often rather be fishing, you know. When we lived in Tiberias, Bob often worked very late at night, and so I was usually asleep by the time he was ready to turn in. And on this particular night. In, instead of just going on to sleep, uh, he came in and, and shook me awake with the exciting news that he had made a, an important discovery. And it really, his excitement was contagious, and although I couldn't understand what it was all about, I certainly knew that something had really happened that night. There were very few people able to understand what had struck Lindsay as so important. Fortunately, I have found a Professor David Flusser who teaches in the field of comparative religion in the Hebrew University. Lindsay had noticed many places in the old Greek texts of the New Testament that didn't sound right in Greek. <laughs> All of these passages worked perfectly, though, as soon as they were translated into Hebrew. He felt this shows that there must have been an earlier text of the New Testament than any we know, and that this text must have been in Hebrew. Now, I think my next step should be... But to find other people who do understand this uh, is extremely difficult. Professor Flusser is a rabbi, a historian, and a linguist. He has brought his deep knowledge of Jewish tradition to help Lindsay understand many difficult questions. It was very important to be able to understand these various dialects of Hebrew and to be able to translate them and work back and forth from Greek to Hebrew. But, you see, he's if Lindsay proves to be right, it means that the Gospels are based on sources much closer to the actual time of Jesus than everybody has thought until now, and that Luke was the first Gospel to be written down. I'm not sure, because mutar be Shabbat. Well, anyhow, and uh, it's easy to see this. If you, if you see that Mark, for example, in chapter 227, so very near this one, yes. has inserted this, this, uh, this rabbinical statement the Sabbath is made for man, not man for the Sabbath, which we have in the parallel in the Talmud. Lindsay's translation into Hebrew of the Gospel of Mark, uh, with a long introduction, is a very important step for the understanding of the message of Jesus. It is for me a very great pleasure that I can work together with Lindsay, who is really my friend, and we
we both are prepared to learn one from the other and to change our opinions when necessary. He's able to see the little nuances that are not easy for me to see, uh, while I have this curiosity that drives me to do a lot of the tedium that's necessary. During their work together over the past 15 years, the friendship between the rabbi and the practical pastor has matured and borne fruit. <laughs> 